Today we're going to be talking about survival knives for Alaska and what I think a survival knife needs to have in order to be a proper knife to help you in a survival situation if you find yourself in one in the great state of Alaska. So Alaska I think is a different type of place and situation from a lot of the lower 48 and I think it makes unique requirements on the tools we choose primarily due to just one simple fact of isolation. There's no place anywhere in the lower 48 that can even come close to the isolation that Alaska has. And I don't just mean the separation from the continental 48 states, but I mean just being in the middle of the bush. You can be easily 60, 70, to even 200, 300, 400 miles from the nearest civilization. Especially if you are flying from village to village, or if you're flying from a place such as Fairbanks or Anchorage to a village, and should your plane go down, it can put you hundreds of miles from the closest civilization. And so the sheer isolation factor alone means that your gear is going to make or break you because you may be in a position where regardless to how fit you are or in shape you are, you're not going to be walking out of there without serious assistance. You're not going to be, you know, just walking down the, the railroad until you get to the next town. This is going to be, you have to hunker down and wait for SAR or search and rescue to find you. So that's what I'm talking about when I mean isolation. So the other thing you have to realize about Alaska is that it is a unforgiving and brutal place. It, especially in the winter, but even in the summer, this is not the type of place where you want weak gear. This is not the type of place where you want equipment that might work. This is equipment that you're going to be doing things such as batoning. I've talked about this before, you know, being in places of Alaska where you know, kindling might be readily available or it might not be readily available. So being able to rely on your tool and baton it or be able to really, you know, uh, do axe like or hatchet like things with that knife will be really important. So that's kind of setting the grounds for, you know, the demands that Alaska makes on the person trying to, you know, scratch out an existence or survive, you know, in the backwoods, in the back country. You know, um, it's going to not be fun. It's not going to be easy. And that's where, you know, a lot of people may say, you know, oh, survival is fun or, you know, I go out and, you know, I do this stuff for fun. And I certainly think that there's a level of recreation to survival, but when you're actually practicing, you know, especially here in Alaska, this is not about having fun, this is about being properly trained and prepared to handle the situation. You want to, uh, you know, have to worry about is your knife breaking when you're getting eaten alive by mosquitoes trying to start that fire and uh, stay warm at night. So let's jump into these knives and take a look at what I think is good and bad about each of these knives and which one or which ones I would trust in Alaska in the survival situation. Gerber Strong Arm. This is the Strong Arm, and it, you know, is a fairly good knife. I think a lot of people that have seen the durability tests on this knife and have either owned one or used one are probably expecting me to say that this is a pretty good survival knife for Alaska. And generally, I would say that this probably... This isn't a bad option, but I don't think that I would personally trust this knife for survival in Alaska for a couple reasons, and the first being the size. And while I will say, you know, Alaska isn't home to the great redwoods, you know, there aren't gigantic trees here, but you have to understand that in Alaska, all there really is for foliage and cover and for building materials and starting fires is trees. There really isn't a lot of undergrowth. You know, we don't have vines. We're not like tropical places where you can use other things for materials. Here, you're going to be using trees, trees, and more trees. Maybe some saplings, but you know, they're all trees or, you know, some 
size, variety, shape of tree that you're going to be using. And so when I say that, I mean that I, when I look for a good survival knife, I'm looking for something that has a minimum of a five to five and a half inch blade. And we'll look at a couple others that, you know, have a six and larger, six inch and larger blades. And that's my primary knock against the strong arm. I think that the strong arm's blade is just a little bit too um, short for good survival. Now, once again, if I found myself having to use a strong arm, I wouldn't, I would feel like I you know, could do it. I could certainly get through with this. But, you know, if I just had a strong arm and I didn't have anything like a saw or a hatchet or an axe with me to accompany this blade, I definitely would miss not having a longer edge or a longer blade. In addition, I'm not a big fan of what Gerber did with their grind. You know, they didn't really uh, make the most of this grind. And uh, that definitely shows when there's, you know, a good quarter inch right there of just missing a grind or bevel, I should say. So that is the uh, knock that I have against this blade. However, the pros to it are that it is a strong full tang blade. It is, you know, a pretty good thickness. I will say something that, uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of blades that are, you know, quarter inch thick. Sorry if I can get this to focus. You know, I'm not a big fan of blades that are a quarter inch thick. You don't really need something, especially with modern steels, that's really meaty, really chunky. And in fact, I find blades that are too thick to actually be just as useless as blades that are too thin. So I think this knife overall is pretty good. It wouldn't be my first choice just because of its thin, you know, or sorry, its short blade length. And the other thing that I personally don't like about the strong arm, and this is just a, you know, this is a personal critique, but I feel that the ergonomics for this blade are a little bit underwhelming. I, I feel like this blade is too thin for me in the hand, and so whenever I hold it, I just feel like, I feel like it needs to be a little bit thicker uh, in the blade, or sorry, in the handle, and I feel like it's just a little bit too thin. And I'll show the other blades too, you know, how their handles are a little bit thicker and a little bit more uh, hand filling ultimately. Jump over to the Cold Steel Search and Rescue Knife or SRK. Now this is probably one of my gold standard knives uh, for budget survival blades. And uh, would I like this knife in an Alaskan survival situation? I think I would. Um, uh, of course, I've never been in a full-on survival situation, but for me, this blade strikes off a lot of the uh, marks that I was talking about. You know, it has good ergonomics, like I just said, and it has a longer blade. You know, this and blade uh, isn't full tang, but I know the SRK. I beat the hell out of the SRK, and I know that this guy is pretty darn tough. You know, it's going to be hard to beat this guy uh, overall for a general purpose well-rounded survival knife especially for the price point that it comes in at uh, you know I mean you can get this knife for as cheap as $32 I mean this thing really is great for that price point now like I said it's gonna have downsides it's not made out of the best steel however neither was the strong arm but you know there are pros and cons to the uh, SK5 high carbon it is probably in my mind a better steel than the 420 HC that the Gerber uses um, because SK5 is more like 1095, but it is overall a really solid knife, and like I said, it fills the hand well, and I love the grip on this thing. It has a lot of micro texturing to it that seems to, you know, get rid of garbage, so like dirt and mud that builds up. It gets out of there pretty easy, and uh, it provides a very comfortable, very tacky and traction-oriented grip, and it kind of has a, you know, rubberized feel to it so it's very grippy very tacky and this knife is essentially a very budget version of something like the Falkneven S1 maybe it's the A1 one of those two but it's essentially like the budget version of that knife and this definitely gets my seal of approval because like I said it has a long blade on it and uh, it has good steel and go good ergonomics and like I said if you're going to be in a survival situation here you're going to have to build shelters, you're going to have to do stuff, and you're going to be using your knife a lot. So you do want good ergonomics, and you do want a blade that is long enough to span pieces of wood comfortably. 
not just by the edge of it. Okay guys, so the last one on the list is probably my overall gold standard for blades. Now this of course is not a cheap knife or a cheap option by any stretch of the imagination. It is, it is definitely comfortably up there in the price point, but this is of course the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. I have talked much about this blade, you know, I've done two reviews on it and you know, I still love this knife so much. It's one of those blades that if you can afford it, you will not regret owning it, but, but ultimately, what do I think about it from an Alaskan survival knife standpoint? I think, like I said, this is a gold standard. It's a very expensive, but it delivers a premium blade steel that's going to hold an edge and be very rust resistant. It, of course, has a longer than six inch blade, and it, you know, it is pretty nice and thick. It's not super, super thick. It's about the same thickness as the SRK, which is good because, like I said, thick knives can be, overly thick knives can be just as bad as overly thin knives, and the ergonomics are absolutely right there. This is my Carta, so it's not going to fill up, you know, with trash. It's not going to wear down like a rubberized finish. It's going to remain and retain its grippiness for decades to come, and uh, so it's a very durable design very durable handle that is comfortable as hell <laughs> and uh, you know it has good grip in all the right Overall, areas. If I was thrown into Alaska or an Alaskan survival situation and I had this Pacific I would feel right at home. I think that's the primary difference between the other blades and this one. You know if I was thrown into a survival situation with the SRK I would feel comfortable. If I was thrown into a survival situation with the Gerber I would feel okay. You know I know I could do it but if I was felt, or if I was thrown into a survival situation with the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific, I would feel right at home. I'd feel like, okay, let's do this. Bring it on, Alaska. I don't know if I'll make it out alive, but I'm going to make it as long as I can. And uh, that's what I feel this blade is all about. And I feel like this blade in particular would definitely be on my comfort scale of very high. I know I can do everything I need to do in a survival situation with this blade, whether it's building shelters, starting fires, um, you know, collecting firewood itself. Uh, you know, I know that this thing got me and, or I know this thing has my back and uh, yeah, there's just a very high comfort level with this one. And everything about it definitely screams Alaskan survival. And so, yeah, that is the Cold Steel, or sorry, not Cold Steel, that is the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific, and uh, it's definitely the number one option, but there are certainly other options out there. The SC whole line of SC, uh, more specifically, things like the SC6, and, uh, you know, the Hoongless 2, or even the Hoongless itself, are, you know, fantastic options. They don't have quite as, you know, high quality of a steel as this, However, SE is actually, you know, producing now CPM S35VN blades for some of their options. I'm not sure if that option has made it to the SE6 yet, but I would imagine when the SE6 and others, you know, like the SE5 get that blade option, if they do get that steel option, it would be very similar to the performance of the Chris Reeve Knives Pacific. I still think the Pacific would have better ergonomics from what I've handled of, you know, SEs. They're not bad. It's just that their ergonomics are a little bit uh, less refined than something along the lines of this Pacific. But the blade steel will be there and, you know, the blade length will be there. So those are other really valuable options that once again, if I had them, I don't have one to personally show here, but if I had one of those, I would feel very comfortable with as well in Alaska for survival. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this, this impromptu video about Alaskan survival knives and what I would feel comfortable with. And ultimately, you know, I'm doing these types of videos to show you guys what to look for if you're looking for something that is really robust and can take the uh, brutal life of you know, being in Alaska in a survival situation. So anyways, guys, hopefully you've enjoyed this video and as always, God bless and I'm out.